Struggling with addiction and depression to realizing his worth. This is the story behind Bradley Cooper. Now, if you see any of my other videos, you know I like to start from the beginning. Now, born Bradley Charles Cooper on January 5th, 1975 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. This makes him 47. To parents Gloria Campo, who is of Italian descent, who worked for a local NBC station, and father Charles John Cooper, who is of Irish descent and was a stockbroker. He has one sibling, an older sister named Holly. In 1994, Bradley attended Georgetown University. In 1997, Bradley graduated with honors from Georgetown with a bachelor's of arts degree. Now, fun fact, while at Georgetown, Bradley became fluent in French and spent six months as an exchange student in France. Immediately after Bradley moved to New York City, he enrolled in the Masters of Fine Arts program at the Actors Studio Drama School at New School University. This is where he developed his stage work, cultivating with his thesis performance as John Merrick in The Elephant Man, performed in New York's Circle in the Square Garden. Now, on October of 1999, while still in school, Bradley began his professional career as an actor, making a brief appearance opposite side Sarah Jessica Parker. On the second season of the drama series on HBO called Sex and the City, Bradley missed his graduation ceremony from the actor's studio in order to star in his first featured film called Wet Hot American Summer, which came out in July of 2001. Bradley Cooper interviewed with Smartless Podcasts which include Will Arnett, Jason Bateman, and Sean Hayes. Now, this is a great cast. Now, during the interview, Cooper stated that when he moved to L.A. to premiere in the TV series Alias, which came out in September of 2001, Cooper was part of the main cast for the first and second seasons. And for the third season, Bradley's character was demoted to just a guest role. He told Will Arnett, Jason Bateman, and Sean Hayes in his interview that this is when he started to feel like he was back in high school, as at the time, he could not get into any clubs and no girl really wanted to look at him. Now, I don't know why, because he, to me, has always been gorgeous. Uh, again, maybe that's just me. <laughs> Anyways, on top of it all, Bradley ended up severely injuring his Achilles tendon. And the show Alias ended up letting him go. Now, at this point, he became totally depressed and even had thoughts of, so, you know, Hopefully you guys know what I mean because I can't say it on here, but so thoughts. Cooper ended up spending a lot of days just lying on his couch, doubting his talents. This is also when he became addicted to drugs. C-O-K-E and alcohol. And continued to struggle with his self-esteem issues all during his 20s. Now, in order for him to overcompensate for his insecurities, he adapted a mean sense of humor. Now, he went on to tell a story on the Smartless podcast with Arnett, uh, Bateman, and Hayes that in July, about July of 2004, when Cooper was about 29, he realized that he had a problem and went to rehab to seek help after Will Arnett, his neighbor at the time, went to his house 
and had a conversation with him about his behavior and him not being sober that their dinner and him not being sober at their dinner the night before. This caused Bradley to jumpstart his journey to addressing his addiction and his mental health by seeking therapy. And around 2007, Bradley had kicked that habit for good. And Will, do you remember this? And I'll never forget, man. <clears throat> um, we were living next to each other and Will came into where I was living. And, uh, and he's like, hey, man, we had dinner the night before. I know you're not supposed to cry on the show. Sorry, <laughs> this is pretty emotional. Well, I'm not yeah. crying, but um, uh, you're crying. I'm not crying. You're crying. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but I'll never, I'll never forget it because Will, who you know, can be mean, but it's you know, there's no ill will. It's just like if you know each other, you feel safe and the way we do. But I didn't know Will that well then, and he was like, "Hey, man, do you remember we had dinner the other night?" And he goes, "How'd you think that went?" And I was like, "And I remember being at the dinner thinking I was so funny." And I thought these two guys who were my heroes were so, thought that I was so funny. I don't know if you remember this, Will. And you're like, I was like, oh, I thought it was great. I thought it was killing. He goes, yeah, man, you were, and, and Will, or not telling you, he's like, you were a real asshole, man. You were a real asshole. And I was like, what? He's like, yeah. And by the way, have your dogs gone out to the bathroom? And I was like, what? No, uh, what time is it? It's four o'clock. Oh, no. I think they have to go to the bathroom. They're literally standing by the door. And that was like the first time I ever realized I had a problem with drugs and alcohol. Oh. And it was Will saying that to me. And I'll just never forget it. And I was like, oh, the guy that I think is doing mean humor is telling me, like, the truth about that. And it was like, it changed my entire life. And that moment was when oh, I stopped great. pursuing this sort of mean humor thing. Wow. Because I heard, yeah, I'll never forget. Do you remember that, Will? <clears throat> yeah, I do remember that, yeah. In October of 2006, Cooper became engaged to actress Jennifer Espo. And the two married that December of that same year. In May of 2007, Jennifer had filed for divorce and it was finalized in November of that same year. Now, in 2009, the media had speculated about the nature of Renee Zellweger and Cooper's relationship, who he met while filming Case 39. Also around this time, Bradley met Sandra Bullock. Bullock is the one who introduced him to the right people in Hollywood. This is when his career was able to really take off. In June of 2009 is when he did The Hangover. It was a critically and commercial success. This comedy also spawned two sequels, one in 2011 and the other in 2013. And finished among one of the highest gross rated R films in the United States. Side note. Now, the director of this movie named Todd Phillips did the movie The Hangover for free. Now, the reason he did that is because he wanted to pick the actors, which I think he did a great job. Because if you haven't seen the movies or the all three, I would recommend you watch it. The Hangover, hands down, is one of my favorites for Bradley Cooper. Now, the first one to me is the best. First two, I really like. Third one, not as much. But again, I recommend all three as I love all three of them. Anyways, back to the podcast. So Bradley told Smartless Podcast that he was still in depression and he only got out of it once he was able to seek a new therapist and after the hangover had already came out. It wasn't until he was 36 when his career started to take off and his depression started to subside. This is also when he really became known for acting and a bona fide lead man. Gorgeous, let me add. <laughs> in 2011, Cooper starred in his techno thriller Limitless, based on the 2001 novel The Dark Fields by Alan Glenn. In the Nell Berger directed film, he played a struggling writer who is introduced to a non tropic drug 
that gives him the ability to fully utilize his brain and vastly improve his lifestyle. The box office website Mojo was apprehensive of the film's financial prospects, but it emerged as a commercial success as well, with a worldwide gross of a of one hundred and sixty one million dollars. Wow. Now, the greater commercial success followed in the comedy sequel that I mentioned earlier, Hangover Part Two. This film grossed even more money, earning over $580 million worldwide. Sadly, January of 2011, Cooper's dad, Charles John Cooper, passed away from lung cancer. Rest in peace. And on top of that, to make things worse, Cooper and Renee Zellweger reportedly broke up sometime also in 2011. But Cooper was able to bounce back and started dating actress Zoe Saldana from December 2011 to January 2013. In May of 2013, Cooper reprised his role as Phil for the third and final installment of the Hangover trilogy, The Hangover Part 3. Now, this movie was poorly reviewed by critics. Nevertheless, like the preceding Hangovers, the film was a commercial success. Now, this one grossed a little less than the second Hangover, but still grossed $362 million worldwide and remains one of Cooper's highest grossing releases. Now, on December 13, 2013, Cooper took on a supporting role of an unhinged FBI agent called David O. in Russell's crime comedy drama, American Hustle. Inspired by the FBI app scam Steen operation, the film is set against the backdrop of a political corruption in 1970s in New Jersey. It also starred Christian Bell. Amy Adams, Jeremy Reiner, and Jennifer Lawrence. Wow, that's a great cast. <laughs> American Hustle was another movie Cooper participated in that was another critical and commercial success, grossing over $251 million worldwide. Man, he's hitting on all cylinders. Once he became 36, he could not go wrong. Every movie he touched did great. Like his next movie that came out August of 2014 called Guardians of the Galaxy. This is where Cooper provided the voice of Rocket Raccoon. And this movie was also, of course, a critical and commercial success, grossing over $770 million worldwide. This is why I said he could not go wrong after the hangovers he was loved by everyone this is another reason why this was able to help his depression along with seeking his therapist because he did say in the podcast that he still sees her from time to time just to keep his mental health on track but this doesn't hurt (laughs) now in december of 2014 cooper found greater success with the war biopic american sniper which he also actually co-produced and directed along with alongside Clint Eastwood. Now, American Sniper ended up grossing $547 million worldwide. And again, it was Cooper's highest grossing live action film and third highest grossing rated R film of all time behind, of course, his hangovers. Now, for his work of these films, he was nominated for two Academy Awards and became the 10th actor to receive an Oscar nomination in three consecutive years. I'm telling you, he could not go wrong. Now, around April 2015, Cooper started a relationship with Russian model Irna Sky. And again, I'm so bad with pronunciation, so forgive me. On May 5th of 2017, 
Cooper reprised his role as the voice of Rocket Raccoon in the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. This movie was also another critical and commercial success, grossing over $860 million worldwide. Now, this was Cooper's highest grossing animated film. Now, on March of 2017, him and Russian model Erna welcomed their first daughter together named Lee D. Sini Cooper. And again, I'm so bad with names. Like I said earlier, so bad with pronunciation. Forgive me. My dad is African, so I am African. So forgive the heavy accent. Now, on April 27th of 2018, Cooper was in the film Avengers Infinity War. And it grossed over $2.7 billion worldwide making this the highest gross film for Cooper of all time. It outshined all of them, every single one of them. <laughs> I'm telling you, he was in freaking, he has been in the spotlight since he did the hangovers. He has not looked back. He has been in high demand ever since and to this day. Now, on October 5th of 2018, he did A Star is Born. Now, this one did have some critical acclaim, but it was Cooper's first directed film that he did all by himself as a remake of the 1937 musical film of the same name, A Star is Born. Cooper starred in the film also as an established singer, Jackson Maine, whose romance with a woman named Allie, played by Lady Gaga, becomes strained after her career begins to overshadow his. Having long expired to direct a film, Cooper was keen to making a love story. So he really didn't care if it did good or bad. He just wanted to direct something different, which was his first love story. Now, people had warned him against directing a third remake. Um, and Cooper feared that the film would end his directing career if it had failed. But as it turned out, the film ended up earning over $436 million at the box office with only a budget production of 36 million so it really outshined what he was wanting to do and i'm saying a lot of that is lady gaga because she does also have a huge following you know so a lot of that was with her help uh but of course like i said cooper's always been in demand so no matter what he does people are just going to come out to see it um uh, but the, the film was good i think the film was pretty good for a third remake <laughs> Now, on April 26th of 2019, Cooper returned again as Rocket in Avengers Endgame, grossing over $2.048 billion worldwide, making it his second highest grossing film of all times behind the first Avengers movie that he participated in. Unfortunately, in June of 2019, him and his then-girlfriend, Erna, broke up. Reports came out that she wanted more of a commitment from Cooper, and the two were always constantly arguing. Also, later it came out that the two realized that it was their baby that was just keeping them together. Oh, wow, that's sad. But I guess that's when you know you have to move on when you're only staying for the children, which a lot of people do, but I don't recommend. You know, if you're not in love, you might as well call it quits, especially if they weren't married. So it's easier to walk away. It's a little bit harder when you're married because you have that piece of paper and people just call it just a piece of paper. But no, it makes it harder to walk away because you got to get judges involved, attorneys involved. It's not just a piece of paper. So I hate when people say that. But anyways, back to the story. Sorry, went on a little tangent there. But anyways, on a better note, in October 4th, 2019, Joker was released, which Cooper co-produced with Todd Phillips, who he had worked with back when he did the initial hangovers. Now, the Joker was a psychological thriller starring Jacqueline Phoenix. Joker grossed over $1 billion worldwide, 
making the making it the highest R-rated film that Cooper did of all time. So it was this one, which was one billion dollars. Wow. And then his hangovers, because those were also rated R. Oh, and then American Hustle, because that was also rated R. So it's Joker, Hangover One and Two, um, and then the American Hustle, and then it was, I think, the Hangover 3. Because the Hangover 3 did pretty good. It just didn't do, like, 1 and 2. Now, Cooper is set to reprise his role as the voice of Rocket Raccoon in the third volume of the Guardians of the Galaxy. Be coming out in spring of 2023 of this year. Um, Happy New Year's to everybody. I know I'm putting this out a little late, but Happy New Year's. Now, today, Cooper has been nominated for nine Academy Awards um, as of now. Additionally, he has also been nominated for five Golden Globe Awards and one Tony Award. To date, Cooper's film have earned a total of $11.2 billion worldwide. Wow. That is amazing. That is remarkable. That is crazy. I'm telling you, he does crazy numbers. Like, I didn't look into how much he makes, but he's worth a lot of millions. If not, he's a billionaire. But again, I didn't look into that. I guess I should have looked into how much he makes. But sometimes Forbes lies about that, like they did with Kylie Jenner. But that's a different story. Let me know down below if you'd like me to cover that. Anyways, let me stop getting off my tangents <laughs> and get back to the story. Now, Cooper's daughter is now five and he is currently dating a politician. Her name is Huma Abedin. She is of Indian and Pakistani descent. And she does have a child of her own. So I guess that's good because they each have a child. But this is something different from what, who he usually goes with. So, you know, hopefully it works out between the two. Um, reports say that the two were set up by a mutual friend and have been dating for a few months now. Now, again, if you like this type of content, please like, share, 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 subscribe. As I am new to YouTube, all these likes are going to help me push me through the algorithm so it more gets to more viewers. Um, for everybody who's already subscribed, thank you, thank you, thank you. Bye.